what does poverty have to do with wisdom? Or, what does wisdom have to do with poverty? Welcome to another installment in the Over My Shoulder Bible Study series. These brief video Bible studies serve to supplement the sermon that I preach each Sunday here with the Missouri Street Church of Christ in Baytown, Texas. This coming week will be in our third of three weeks of reading of the entirety of the book of Proverbs. This is a portion of our three-year church-wide Bible reading project that we call Immerse, reading the whole Bible over the course of three years. Now, as we've been saturating ourselves of late with the Proverbs, uh, something comes immediately to the fore. This is a book full of a great many different subjects. All sorts of things are discussed here. Every conceivable topic, it would appear. And yet, if we were to ask ourselves, are there topics that are discussed far more frequently? And if so, what are some of the most frequent? Well, the subject of poverty and the poor would be near the top of the list. That's important to note. This is a book of wisdom. That is, it's a book to help instill wisdom in others and to launch others on a trajectory of a life that grows in wisdom. And to grow wise in God's wisdom means very close to the heart, being careful in the way we relate to those who are poor, to giving a care, a special care, for those to whom God gives a special care. We don't have the time in this brief video to discuss all the passages that we've encountered thus far in Proverbs that deal with poverty and the poor, but we can note a number of them from this past week's reading and that, if God gives it to us, this coming week's reading. A good place to start here is in chapter 14, verse 21. It's a sin to despise one's neighbor, but blessed is the one who is kind to the needy. To be actively kind to the needy is to find yourself in a blessed place. And to not be actively kind to the needy is equivalent to despising your neighbor. Hmm. Verse 31, just 10 verses later. Whoever oppresses the poor shows contempt for their maker, but whoever is kind to the needy honors God. What can you do today that would honor God deeply? Well, it would be to be kind to the needy. Do you ever find yourself thinking poorly of or speaking badly about or even doing something that would hurt those who are vulnerable? Well, it's not so much against them as it is against the one who made them and you. You might not be even remotely tempted to use God's name in vain or to be guilty of blasphemy. But if you're speaking ill or acting ill toward those who are less fortunate than yourselves, it's a direct offense to the one who made them and you, says Proverbs. The next chapter, chapter 15, verse 25. The Lord tears down the house of the proud, but he sets the widow's boundary stones in place. Widows in ancient times certainly didn't have any matters of security like is common today, whether you speak of social security, Medicare, or other matters. They were totally dependent on the good graces of others and what little they may have been able to save. And so what to do? Well, the Lord gives special care to people in those vulnerable circumstances. It's a great verse to dwell on. It's the Lord who watches out for those who are in need. If you want to be godly, you'll do the same. Chapter 17, verse 5. Whoever mocks the poor shows contempt for their maker. Whoever gloats over disaster will not go unpunished. Very similar to what we just read, isn't it? Why is it repeated? No doubt for emphasis. Chapter 19, verse 17. Whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord, and He will reward them for what they have done. You may recall that was mentioned in the sermon just recently at Missouri Street. Mine own. <laughs> chapter 21, and we'll skip chapter 20 for the moment. Chapter 21, verse 13. Whoever shuts their ears to the cry of the poor will also cry out, and not be answered. Do you want God to listen to your prayers? Then you need to give a careful listen 
to those who cry out around you who are in some sort of economic and physical need. Chapter 22 and verse 9. The generous will themselves be blessed. How is it that they're generous? How is it they find themselves blessed? Because they're actively sharing their food with the poor. Verse 16, same chapter. One who oppresses the poor to increase his wealth, and one who gives gifts to the rich, both come to poverty themselves. Mm. One more, right here in the same chapter. Chapter 22, verse 22 and 23. Do not exploit the poor, because they are poor, and do not crush the needy in court. For the Lord will take up their case, and will exact life for life. Don't become the prosecutor when God is the defender, the defense attorney. I said only one more, those two verses, but I would be doing wrong if I didn't notice verse 28 while we're here. Don't move an ancient boundary stone set up by your ancient ancestors. This is very similar to what we'd read about the widows in another passage a little bit earlier, wasn't it? And it's also very similar to what we'll note here in chapter 23, verse 10 and 11. Don't move an ancient boundary stone or encroach on the fields of the fatherless. Here we are back to the vulnerable, the weak, the needy. For their defender is strong. God is their defense attorney, as it were. He'll take up their case against you. God doesn't lose any cases either. Notice what's said several chapters later. Chapter 28. Chapter 28, verse 3. A ruler who oppresses the poor is like a driving rain. It leaves no crops. Now what's interesting here is you'll notice it says a ruler who oppresses the poor. And you'll see that little letter C. This is the NIV. Notice the footnote. In Hebrew, it could be that the reading is, is a poor person. The text may be saying a poor person who oppresses the poor. But the point is still the same. You don't want to be in the position of oppressing the poor, no matter what position you're in. Whether you're a person of great power and influence and you have the resources to help, or if you're someone just like them, give a care for those who are in need, no matter who you are. Chapter 28, just a few verses later, verse 27. Those who give to the poor will lack nothing, but those who close their eyes to them receive many curses. Well, of course, this is not a blanket statement that's always true all the time. This simply is a word of wisdom. It's not a promise that you'll become a wealthy millionaire if you give to the poor. It is to say that just as you've seen to make sure that the poor are not lacking, that they're not left dangling, well, God's not going to leave you left dangling either. Chapter 30, verse 13 and 14. Those whose eyes are haughty are ever so haughty, whose glances are so disdainful, those whose teeth are swords and whose jaws are set with knives. What kind of people are these people? They, they talk in wicked and evil ways and even the way they look at people, it, it reflects the way they're thinking. What are they thinking and talking about? They're talking about devouring the poor from the earth and the needy from among the men, from mankind. The explo exploitation of others simply because we can. This is the problem of humankind throughout all the ages. It's true not merely on national level, but on an individual level as well. Make sure that you're watching out for the needy and the poor among us. I love the way one translation words this particular passage. It puts it like this. Some people are stuck up and act like snobs. Others are so greedy, they gobble down the poor and the homeless. We can relate to plain talk like that, can't we? We don't want to be stuck up or act like a snob to those who are in need. And we certainly don't want to be taken from those who don't have much to be taken. Don't be taken in by the devil's wiles. Give special care to those who are poor. God does, won't you? Grace and peace be with us all.